Okay, so here we're going to figure out what's the value for the given trig value, uh, functions. So here I'm asked for secant, and so secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so reciprocal just means to flip. So if I have pi over 6 here, I'm going to look for pi over 6. And cosine, so since secant is related to cosine, I have to flip this cosine value. Cosine is always the x value and sine is always the y. So I'm going to grab that x value here. And if I'm flipping this value, then all I do is flip the fraction. So this is really going to be 2 over the square root of 3. But then I have a root in the bottom, so I'm going to rationalize it by multiplying the top and bottom by the root. So this is really 3 in the bottom because square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is 3. And then the top would be 2 square root of 3. And looks like that is secant pi over 6. So remember, reciprocal trigs is where we flip the, um, the, the trig values for sine, cosine, or tangent. So this one's asking for cosecant. So cosecant is the reciprocal. Oh, by the way, before I get into this, secant can also be written as um, secant theta 1 over cosine. But this here just means the same as flipping cosine, okay? When you have 1 over that, that's just flipping this value. So in this case, if I wanted cosecant, that's related to uh, sine. So it's 1 over sine. But I'm just going to go ahead and take that fraction. So if I go to um, sine of pi over 6, that's this value here. It's 1 half. If I flip it, well, that's just going to be um, flipping 1 half, which is 2 over 1, which is just the value of 2. And so cosecant of pi over 6 is just 2. And then last but not least, I have tangents. So if I want to figure out what tangent is, tangent is actually um, what we've learned is y over x, um, but it's also sine over cosine. So if you're taking um, your values here, um, let me write that down here. I'll erase that so that way I have more room. So tangent is sine over cosine. I'm going to erase that. And so in this case, my sine value for pi over 6 was that 1 half. So I'm going to put 1 half on the top. And then the bottom is going to be cosine of pi over 6, which is the square root. Square root of 3 over 2. And so if I'm working this out, I have 1 half. i got to flip this fraction here, so that's going to be 2 square root of 3. And if I multiply this straight across, I notice the twos will cancel because they're diagonal of each other. So I have one square root of three, but then I have a root in the bottom, so I'm going to rationalize. And so this makes it three in the bottom now, and then the top is just one times square root of three, which is the square root of three. So I no longer have the root in the bottom, and that's my value for tangent pi over six. All right, so um, I wanted to bring these problems to attention because I want to look at these identities. So these are what we call the reciprocal identities. I'm going to teach you some more identities to go along. So just a moment ago, we looked at the reciprocal identities for secant and cosecant, and we'll also do it for cotangent. So secant is 1 over cosine. Cosecant is 1 over sine. And then cotangent is going to be 1 over tangent theta. And so in this case, there are also identities that are called the quotient identities. So for tangent, it was that sine over cosine. And then cotangent is the opposite. It's cosine in the top and then sine in the bottom. But then there are new ones on here. This one's, these are called the Pythagorean identity. Okay, um, so you'll notice a lot of squaring here. So apparently sine squared plus cosine squared is actually just equal to 1. Tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared, and 1 plus cotangent um, squared is cosecant squared. And all of these can be proven using a triangle on the unit circle, um, but I'm not going to show that here because it takes me a while to prove. Um, but we're going to learn how to use these identities to verify
um, trach expressions. Um, so today we're just going to mess around and manipulate them and simplify trig expressions until we further can't. So let's take a look at quite a few examples in this video. All right, so here we are looking at chapter 18.1, some problems from 28 to 53. So here I've chosen one, and all you have to do is write the expression in terms of sine and cosine. So you just use sine and cosine. There's a sine, but you have a cotangent, so you might need to change the cotangent. And it says to simplify so that no quotient, no quotient just means that um, you can't have like a fraction um, appear in the final expression. So try to make this not look like a fraction. Um, so first off, we want to change this to just sine and cosines. Well, um, that means I need to change the cotangent to be something else. Well, we learned that one of the identities is saying that cotangent is equal to cosine over sine. So that means that I can change this guy here to, um, let me use a highlighter, so this guy here as cosine theta over sine. And then this is being multiplied, because these two are multiplying each other since they're sitting next to each other, by sine theta. And so I notice like this one's a fraction, this one's not. I can always put this sine over 1 to make it a fraction. And then if I multiply, those are diagonal from each other, so they cancel. So if you multiply straight across, that's just cosine in the top and 1 in the bottom. And well, cosine over 1 is just cosine, and I really can't simplify this any further, and also I'm just left with cosine, so that's reasonable that this would be simplified. So I'll just stop here. So it looks like it simplifies to just cosine theta. Let's try another one. So again, we're trying to change this to just so that the trig expression only has a cosine or a sine and no fractions. So like cosine I can't change here, but cosecant is basically um, cosecant is 1 over sine, right, if you use the identities from the last slide. So you have cosine that drops down. You can replace cosecant as 1 over sine. And if you multiply, well, let's just put this over 1. So if you multiply this straight across, you add cosine on the top, sine in the bottom. Cosine over sine is basically cotangent. So instead of writing it this way, you can just write it as cotangent. And then just leave your answer like this because you can't really simplify this any further. Now, they did want the answer in terms of sine and cosine. But in this case, I wanted to show you that, yeah, you could leave your answer like this. But know that this here is a much cleaner form because you've basically condensed this fraction into one trig value. Um, so these problems, you can kind of just manipulate until you can't figure out any other way to manipulate. Um, so by the way, these problems kind of have like several different answers. We're just going to keep simplifying until we can't really find anything else to simplify. All right, let's try some more here. Okay, so 42 here, I have, I noticed that there is a cotangent and there is a one plus tangent squared. So this gets a little bit tricky. Um, so what I have to notice is that one plus tangent squared, that's part of the Pythagorean identity. So the Pythagorean says if you have tangent squared plus one, that equals secant squared. So notice how this is one plus tangent squared, right, inside. So that means that all of this is equal to secant. So I can change all of this guy to secant. And then this other side here is cotangent. I'm just going to drop that down. Now, it looks like I'm multiplying these two. So one thing I might want to ask myself is that, well, in this case, you know, what's another way I can write cotangent? And maybe another way I can write secant squared. Now, we don't want to change the secant squared back to this, but cotangent is basically, um, we saw a moment ago, cotangent is cosine over sine, right? And so in this case, this is really um, cosine over sine, but here's the thing. This here is a squared cotangent. That means that all of this gets squared. The top will get squared, so the cosine squared, and the sine is squared. That's the only thing you need to know. Um, secant is identity is, let me write that over here. So secant's identity 
It's 1 over cosine theta. So this is 1 over cosine theta. But notice that this here, secant is squared. So that means that the top is squared. But 1 squared is just 1. Cosine squared is cosine squared. So notice that this allows you to cancel out the, di the diagonals. And so if you multiply straight across, you have 1 over sine squared. But 1 over sine squared is actually cosecant. But because it's a square, this is going to be a cosecant squared. And then that's it. This is your more simplified format. OK. So notice I'm now using several different identities to help me simplify as much as I can. Let's try out 44. So 44 here, I notice there are two factors, right? And so what I can do is like use the FOIL property where you're just distributing. So if I were to FOIL this here, let me grab my pen, secant times secant is secant squared. Secant times 1 is secant. Negative 1 times secant is negative secant. And then negative 1 times positive 1 gives me negative 1. What I notice is when I FOIL it out, the middle terms, these two, this one's a positive secant, this one's a negative, so they're going to cancel out. And so then I'm left with secant, oops, sorry, secant squared minus 1. And then what exactly is secant squared minus 1? Well, there's an identity that can help us out. Notice here I have tangent plus a secant squared theta, right? This is one of the Pythagorean identities. Let me just play that for a minute. So I'm going to rewrite that over here just to mess with it. Oops. So it looks like you have tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared. So my um, trig expression right now, notice I have a secant squared minus 1. And what I'm going to do is like use the Pythagorean and make it look like that and then figure out what does it equal. So if I have the secant on this side, I could subtract the 1 to make it look like this, right? So if I subtract this 1, that cancel leaves you in with a tangent squared on this side. And then this would be secant squared minus 1. So notice that how secant squared minus 1 is actually equivalent to tangent. So I re can replace all of this with tangent squared. And that's what I'm going to do here. So I can replace this guy here with just tangent squared theta. And then that's it. I really can't simplify this any further. I'm just going to leave it as tangent squared. So today we're just going to practice like different types of manipulation skills that you could do to help you try to simplify as much as you can. Let's try another one. Okay, so here I'm going to be, um, it looks like I have a fraction, right? These both are fractions. And so when you're dealing with like you're dividing by something, one way you can deal with this is just to separate the terms using, using the denominator for each one. Um, so what I mean by that is that cosine would get its own sign, be divided by sine. Then I have a plus sign in the middle. And then sine would also get divided by sine. So each term on the top gets its own denominator separately. And so then I could simplify. So the first one here is just cosine over sine. Well, that's actually cotangent. And then sine over sine, anything over itself is just 1. And so I can't really simplify this any further. There's no identity here these two, so I'm just going to keep it the way it is. So this is cotangent plus 1. Whereas like this side here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm basically going to give this its own denominator and then this the same denominator. So I'm going to separate them and see if I can simplify further. So you have cosine theta over sine theta cosine theta minus sine squared plus, uh, divided by sine cosine so in this case, the, um, the, the first fraction here, this has a cosine in the bottom, and the top is a cosine squared. So you can cancel out one of the cosines in the bottom, and then cancel out one of the um, cosines on the top, which leaves it as just cosine. So you're taking away one cosine in the bottom and one cosine in the top, which leaves you with a cosine in the top, and then a sine in the bottom. And then I can do this again for this bottom. Uh, so in this case, the second time, 
sine cancels and then one of the sines will cancel in the top. So this is, leaves you with sine in the top and cosine in the bottom. Cosine over sine is equal to cotangent. Sine over cosine is equal to tangent. And then these two, um, I can't really simplify any further. So I'm just going to leave my answer like this. So I think the hard part about these problems, um, after you get to the point where you know all the identities that help you switch them, I think the more difficult part is like, when do you know to stop? And it's just for me, it's through experience that I know, okay, like if I were to try to manipulate it, I'm just going to get back to where I started. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about like knowing when to stop. Um, I would probably focus more about like trying to change it as much as you can until you run out of ideas to manipulate it. Um, because later on, I'm going to give you problems where I tell you when you st actually stop. And I'll explain that in journal like 25. So here I have uh, 40, oops, sorry, that was supposed to be my mouse. I have 48 here, and notice it's a 1 minus sine squared theta. So this one can be a little bit tough. Um, what you have to realize is that the, um, basically the top here is related to one of them, and so is the bottom of the Pythagorean. You have to use the Pythagorean here. So let's just start with the bottom. Okay, so this guy. 1 plus cotangent squared. If you look at the Pythagorean identity, I'll write it over here. But one of the, uh, the identities is that 1 plus cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared. And so in this case here, I can replace the bottom as cosecant. So I can replace all of this, all of this with cosecant squared. Which is kind of nice. Um, and what I'm going to do is basically do that for the top. So the top here is 1 minus sine squared. And so the Pythagorean has one that has sines and cosines. So cosine, um, actually I think the formula is like this doesn't matter too much but I think it's like sine theta plus cosine theta equals 1 right so notice if I want to have the 1 and the sine together I have to subtract this sine so if I subtract sine this goes to the other side it cancels and then I'm left with um, cosine that gets brought down then 1 minus sine 2 theta. And so this could here be an identity that we could possibly use. So notice I have a 1 minus sine theta, and apparently 1 minus sine theta using the Pythagorean is actually e equal to cosine squared. So on the top here, I can replace that as cosine squared. And so if I were to do this, well, basically this bottom here cosecant is actually, um, what is that, 1 over sine squared. So cosines, uh, let me grab my black pen, cosine is still on the top. The bottom here, I'm going to switch cosecant to its identity. So cosecant is 1 over sine, but because it's squared, I'm going to make it a square. And so I'm basically dividing by a fraction. So I have to flip that fraction. So this is going to be cosine theta. Flip the sine. And then if you multiply straight across, all right, cosine times sine squared is just cosine sine squared. And then the bottom here would be a 1, but I'm not going to write the 1 the bottom because that's redundant. So these two here, I can't really simplify any further. So I'm going to leave my answer like this. All right, let's try out this one here, 49. So 49 here has a secant minus cosine. So maybe the first thing I would do is like, you know, secant here like is related to cosine. So secant is actually um, 1 over cosine. 
theta and you're subtracting this with cosine. And so what I notice is that you have a fraction subtracting something that's not a fraction. So one of the first things I'll probably do is put this non-fraction over one to make it in a fraction form. And then I notice I have to subtract them, so I might need a common denominator. So one can become a cosine if I multiply it by cosine. And then so this part here just comes down as it is. This side will get multiplied. So you have cosine squared in the top and then cosine in the bottom. And then because the denominator is the same, you can bring the denominators together as just cosine. And then the top will be 1 minus cosine squared theta. Well, I think a moment ago we did something very similar. So this here is 1 minus cosine squared in the top. So it turns out like 1 minus cosine if you use the Pythagorean. So let me rewrite the Pythagorean here. So Pythagorean is sine plus cosine. So if you subtract the cosine over, that cancels. So you have sine on this side, sine squared. And then this would be 1 minus cosine theta. Sorry, that should be a squared. And so in this case, I can replace this here, this here, with sine squared. And so that's exactly what I'm going to do. Put a sine squared in the top. And then the bottom here is just a cosine theta. And so this gets a little tricky, but one of the things you can do is basically split up things that have a square. And so what I mean by that is just splitting up, like making two copies of them. Because anything squared is itself multiplying it twice. Sorry, that should be a sine twice. Cosine in the bottom. And so why I want to do this is because I can cluster up, you know, a sine and cosine together. If I were to do that, that kind of gets me somewhere. So sine and cosine, if I put them on top of each other, and then this one, just a sine on its own. Sine and cosine is tangent. I can replace that with tangent theta, and then a sine next to it drops down. It's just this sign that was hanging off. So I use one of the signs to uh, put together with cosine to make tangent, and then the sign just comes down, and this is it. This is my final answer. I can't really change this anymore or manipulate it, so I'll leave my answer like this. All right, let's do one more practice problem in the next slide. All right, so here I need to switch the top and the bottom, kind of like what I did last time. Okay, so using those identities, that would really help me out here. So 1 plus tangent squared goes back to the Pythagorean identity. 1 plus tangent squared is actually equal to cotangent. I'm sorry, not cotangent, uh, secant squared, my bad. So I can replace all of this with just secant squared. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And then the bottom here, I have 1 plus cotangent. And so if you look at the Pythagorean identity, one of them says uh, 1 plus cotangent squared is equal to actually cosecant. So I'm going to take this bottom here and replace it with cosecant squared. And so if I were to do this, maybe one of the things I could do is like change, um, change secant and cosecant to its reciprocal identities. So secant here is really 1 over cosine squared theta. Whereas um, cosecant is 1 over sine squared theta. And so if I were to do this, I can flip it. So I would have 1 over cosine theta, flip the bottom fraction. So this would be sine squared over theta and multiply straight across. So that would actually give me sine squared on the top, cosine squared in the bottom,
which is actually equal to, well, sine and cosine. When you have sine and cosine on top of each other, you get tangents. But since they're both squared, it's going to be tangent squared. And that's it. Because I can't really simplify tangent squared into anything else. Um, on this one here, this one can be a little bit tricky. But what I like to do is notice that I have a sine square and a cosine square. So if you were to just rearrange that, let me grab those. So these two I noticed. So what I'm going to do is put them together. So I put a sine, oops. Put a sine squared plus cosine squared. And then I'll put the tangent afterwards I won't worry about the tangent until later so these two sine and cosine when they're added together they just make one just a one then tangent squared comes down but tangent squared plus one is just um secant theta and i think that's all you can really do you could keep changing secant but i think that would actually make it more messy so i'm going to leave my answer like this and that's it for this lesson. This journal video is a little bit longer just because I do a lot of practice problems with you. Don't feel like you need to do all of them, but I think the more the better. Um, that way you can get quite a bit of variety. That's it for this journal.